my fellow QPR fans, welcome back to the second instalment of Talking Rangers, where today we're going to be looking at what happened to the players from the 2012-13 season that saw us relegated from the Premier League. That season was one to forget, definitely for QPR fans. It saw us rock bottom of the Premier League. It saw us go 16 games without a win. It saw us part ways with Mark Hughes and Harry Redknapp take the reins. He saw 18 players leave the club at the end of the at the end of the season, either on loan or permanently. So we're going to have a look what happened to the players, where did their careers go, where did they end up, and where did it all go wrong. But firstly, make sure to check out the first video if you missed it, linked down below in the description, and make sure to follow Talking Rangers on Instagram. Right, so let's kick it off. Right, just a little quick disclaimer, I'm not going to include players like Clint Hill, Jamie Mackey, Ado Tarab, because we all know what happened to them. I'm going to talk about the players that we kind of wanted to forget. So with no further ado, let's get started with the goalkeeper. Right, no better place to start than in goal. With none other than Julio Cesar, the ex-Champions League winner, at the time of signing was 32 years old, signed from Inter Milan for an undisclosed fee, putting an end to a seven-year stay. At the time, he was marked as one of the best goalkeepers in the world, but sadly, his performances didn't, didn't live up to the hype. I can remember being really excited about signing him, but uh, the excitement ended fairly quickly. He played 24 times out of 38 Premier League games that season, conceding 37, keeping six clean sheets, which is fair enough. I mean, with playing in front of Chris Samba, he can hardly be expected to be keeping clean sheets every game. But anyway... Um, yeah, he struggled to settle in West London, um, he had close competition with Rob Green and towards the end of the season he kind of came out of favour and did spend a lot of time on the bench, which did see him leaving at the end of the season, especially to try and cut the wage bill in the Championship. He went over stateside for a loan spell of Toronto, only featuring seven times. Uh, at the end of that season he then went on to join the Portuguese Giants in Benfica, uh, which is, he did pretty well over there, he kept... 37 clean sheets in 54 games, um, which was pretty remarkable. And then after that spell, he went over back to his home country with Flamingo before retiring at the end of the season. So, in right back, we have Jose Basingua. The 29-year-old signed a three-year contract after being released by the scum. He played 20 times for us that season. He had 10 games out of a back injury. Um, I would never forgive him for laughing when we were relegated. Absolute scumbag. Uh, heartless. Just a disgusting man. Um, and you can tell fitting that he played for Chelsea. Yeah, luckily he left by mutual consent at the end of the season um, and joined Travanspor in the Turkish League. Played 63 times for them. He then left them and then joined them again um, and then retired in July 2016. It's always nice to know that his career didn't hit new heights after his abysmal stay at QPR. Right, so in centre half, we've got Christopher Samba. <sighs> Signed from Anzi for £12.5 million pounds on a four year deal earning £100,000 a week. A ludicrous, I know. He was a shadow of his past self at Blackburn. He was just abysmal. He was so poor. Uh, I was furious with that signing. I mean, Harry Redknapp sold us a dream saying he'd solve all of our defensive problems. He didn't solve anything. If anything, he made us worse. It's just watch the clips from this Fulham game. The first goal, he gives away a stonewall penalty. The second goal, he gives away the ball on the edge of the box and lets his man straight past him. The third goal, Luckily, he left that summer and Anzi, for some reason, wanted to pay £12 million to bring him back. But then he left two months later to Dynamo Moscow. Two months later, just after re-signing. Anyway, he stayed there for three years. He then had a year stint at a Greek side. Oh, with me. Panakinakios. I've no idea how you say it. He had a year stint there. Then he returned to Aston Villa. He was then released there and he's now without a club. He hasn't officially said he's retired yet. Mad. Next up on the list, we have Stefan Vieira at centre half. The Cameroonian signed a two year contract with a deal worth £5.4 million. He was pretty present in that Premier League campaign, starting 29 games. 
a pretty reckless player, getting 10 yellow cards and one red. He did register three assists and he was a brilliant player and I'm pretty gutted he did leave the following season. Uh, he left to join Sevilla on loan and then with, with money signing a two year contract he was free to leave at the end of that deal. So Sevilla signed him on a permanent basis and he played 43 times in that season. Uh, he left Sevilla at the end of the season, joining Travensport, just like Basingua. Um, he played a season there and then he swapped Turkey for China, playing for Hebina China Fortune. I don't know if I said that right. HBCFFC. Played there for a season, then he went back to France for Toulouse. Then a season there, <laughs> then from Toulouse back to China to play for a different Chinese side. And then he left them to play for another Chinese side. Uh, which he still plays for now. That means he played. He was on the books of four teams in just two years. Next up, a left back with Armand Traoré signing on a free transfer after being released from Arsenal. He made 87 appearances for the Rangers over a five-year spell. Um, he started out really well for us. Um, he did really well in the 2012-13 season and the 13-14. However, he kind of came out of favour, kind of a bit lazy, um, and yeah, he didn't really play too much. And he, it was a, kind of a shadow of the player he was a few years ago. He did, however, score this crazy goal, his insane skill. Okay, but they start this second half nice and brightly, and it's an early chance for Traore on the volley. And a goal! 20 seconds into the second half. More than a thousand Rangers fans brought to their feet by that brilliant moment of skill from the QPR. He then left once his contract was up, joining championship rivals Nottingham Forest. He made 30 appearances for the Reds before leaving on loan to Cardiff, uh, making only four appearances. He then fancied a, he fancied a stint as well in Turkey, playing for Rizpor, Rizpor, <laughs> that's how you say it. Um, he joined them, but he didn't make a single appearance. Um, yeah, I'm not surprised. He did get, as I say, pretty lazy. Uh, he then had, went back on loan to Cardiff, um, and then after leaving there, he's now without a club. Next up is holding midfielder Samba Daikite, the Malian impressed during his loan spell with us who made his deal permanent for 3.6 million, signing from AS Nancy. Since signing permanently, he only made 14 appearances and struggled to nail down a spot in the starting eleven due to inconsistencies. I mean, he showed some real glimpses of quality. I was a fan of his, but it came at the end of the season where, yeah, he just became too inconsistent and you never knew what you were going to get with him. He left QPR the following season, um, having two very unsuccessful loan spells at Watford and Saudi Arabian side Itihad. He only made 13 appearances for both clubs. Once his contract was up, he was free to leave on a free transfer. Uh, he spent a three-year spell at a French team in the third division by the name of Red Star. He then left them before joining Tadamon in the Middle East, who he still plays for now. Next to Daikite, we've got the Spaniard, Esteban Granero. He was tipped for very big things in West London, uh, especially after featuring 28 times for Real Madrid the previous season and big expectations after signing for £7.2 million. He featured 25 times that season for QPR. Struggling to adapt to the physicality of the Premier League, he did show real moments of class as he was a classy player. But it wasn't a surprise that when we got relegated, we wanted to move him on to recuperate some of the transfer fee and get his big wages off the books. So his dad offered him a lifeline and take him on loan back to his home country. Um, he then signed permanently with them the following season for 3.6 million, just half what we paid two years ago. He had three successful years there before moving on to fellow La Liga side Espanyol and then stepping down to the Spanish third tier uh, with... Uh, Marbella this season, who he's playing for now. Next, in right midfield, we've got Sean Wright Phillips. The former England international joined us from Manchester City and sadly was with us for four years. The first two years, he was ever present throughout the two campaigns, featuring pretty heavily, um, and he was, he was half decent. He was all right, became more and more average as games went on. But the last two seasons, he was absolutely nowhere to be seen. Um, to be honest, he was a sport brat. Um, he was happy to not turn up to any games, didn't want to leave, and just rob us of his £80,000 as his reported wage of what he was on. He did, however, 
score a winner against Chelsea, which makes every single penny worthwhile, as I'll show you now. He left the club when his contract was up, finally, and went stateside to join New York Red Bulls. Um, he's only scored one goal in 21 games for them, which is obviously pretty poor for an attacking player. And then he stepped down to the American second tier of Arizona, uh, and then moved on to another American team in Phoenix Rising before retiring at last. So, on the left, we had no other than Jisung Park. The former South Korean international joined from Manchester United, signed a two-year contract for £2 million. He featured pretty heavily at the start of the season in this campaign, but with Mark Hughes' departure, his presence faded. Uh, he did play 25 times, didn't score, but assisted four times. Just another player that didn't live up to the anticipation. Park left at the end of the season like many others. Uh, he joined PSV, Eidenhoven on loan, he paid 23 times for them, uh, but did decide to retire at the end of the season, retiring from a very successful career for the, the former QPR player, um, one Champions, one-time Champions League winner and a four-times Premier League winner. Sadly, none of those with QPR. Up top, no other than Loic Remy. Back in January 2013, QPR beat Newcastle to the signing of the prolific Frenchman for £8 million. Remy did really well for us, he scored 6 goals in 16 games, but couldn't quite keep us up that year. He did score this absolute belter though. He was another player that had to leave when we were relegated with him being on high wages. Keep wanted to get some of the money back, so we loaned him out to Newcastle who paid £2 million loan fee. He did really well for them, he scored 16 in 26 games. Uh, at the end of that season, we also were promoted, so back in the Premier League. And, well, what a, what a player to have back on our hands, Lurk Remy. Uh, he played the first two games and he looked set to stay. You know, I don't think he, wanted, he wouldn't want to do that either to us. He's a very, he's a good lad and uh, he's got a good relationship with the chairman. Three days later. Chelsea, how do you feel? Yeah, I feel very proud and very happy to join Chelsea today. Uh, for me, it's a, it's a, a big thing happened. For so yeah, he signed for the Scummy Blues for £10.5 million. Good business for QPR. He had a couple of successful seasons there, sadly. We don't like to see them succeed. Then he went on a loan spell at Palace. Uh, then he did a permanent move to the second tier in Spain with Las Palmas, then to Getafe on loan also in Spain, then back to Las Palmas and then signed permanently with Lille in the French League, who he still plays for now. To complete the team, we've got Jay Boffroyd. What a player. Um, he joined us when he was 29 years old after being released from Cardiff. Um, he scored three goals in 25 games for us during that season. Um, funnily enough, we let him go on loan at the end of the season to Sheffield United um, after he didn't impress the Rangers faithful, with myself included. He scored one goal for them, uh, which is no surprise. Um, so after his contract was up with us, he was released and he joined, wait for it, Muang Fong United in the Thai League, <laughs> then joined Jubilo Luwata in the Japanese second tier. He did score 34 and 54 for them, fairly impressive, um, but I'm sure it's not impressive the people he's playing with or against. And then he joined the team that's now called HC Sapporo in the Japanese first division, who he's playing for now. That is definitely a step down. All right then, that'll wrap it up for the second video on the channel. Let me know what you think about some of those players, their careers and what happened to them. Mental. It's amazing that we signed half of those. Um, it's amazing how bad nearly all of those were for us. And it just goes to show why we were so bad that season. But yeah, luckily we're in better hands now. We're buying better players and we're making better decisions. But anyway, that'll wrap it up for the second video. And uh, stay tuned, make sure you subscribe, leave a like. And I'll see you in the next one.